Happy birthday, as well. You always find the latest courtyard. Coming in solution. Get out of the box. Hello, and welcome to Radio Waves by Todd If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, shootouts of new and classic portable radios, plus do-it-yourself kits, then please subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos that I publish every evening. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Porth Kerno 6-band radio. It's a medium wave and short wave kit. I purchased this kit for a total of $23.75 from eBay, and I'll include that link below. It came in the box like this. There's a little postage from England. Customs form. Let's see what we get. Okay, we got some directions, looks like. And we got a bunch of components. So I'm just going to go ahead and just dump these out over to the side here. And first thing we're going to look at are the instructions. So it's pretty detailed. Goes over the board. It uses six different inductors. It has two different power modes. You can do free power, which is no batteries, or you can use two AA batteries to power standard headphones. Pretty cool. Pretty excited about building this kit. It's very different. Um, being six bands, it's got some coverage here. Here's our band coverage with the six inductors. You can see with the first one, you get 700. That's 1.6 megahertz, uh, 1.2 to 2.9. And you can see how that increases up as you go up with the bands. And you select these bands by a jumper, I believe. Basic, simple, but hopefully is fun. That's what it's all about. There's the power mode where you can use standard headphones. And it says here that the transistor acts as a detector and it takes the germanium diode out of circuit. So, pretty cool. It also uses a uh, valve tube to, as a arrestor for your external antenna if you're using one, uh, so it doesn't build up uh, too much static. There's a schematic of the radio. One transistor receiver circuit diagram. Cool. So let's go look at the part list. Here we got the PCB. And you can see there um, where the components lay. You have your jumpers for the bands. So we have our connections, aerial and earth. We have an RF gain potentiometer. That'll be nice putting that in. Uh, we have so a lot of different things here. Uh, of course, resistors, capacitor, transistor. Um, this is where the tube's going to go. So yeah, it's, it's pretty small. So total dimensions of this little guy, um, as you can tell, it fits in the palm of my hand, uh, is three and seven eighths of an inch long, so almost four inches long, two inches wide, and a thickness of one sixteenth of an inch. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so we got that. Let's go look at some parts here. They give us a, looks like an aerial here. We get the potentiometer for the antenna gain, I believe, RF gain. And a knob, nice. Here they've got bag the different inductors, the six inductors for your different bands, and then the variable capacitors to tune those inductors. And then we have a pair of headphones they included. That was a nice touch. And let's see what else we got. We got the okay, this bag has a bunch of fun stuff. So you got your resistors, you got a capacitor, you have some headphone jacks, terminal block. It's nice having a terminal block. I'm glad they included that. Um, so the alligator clips, that makes it a lot easier for me. Um, we have a slide switch, I guess, for a mode, for power probably. There's our germanium diode there, you can tell. And then we have some jumpers, and then there's the Darlington transistor, which acts in the powered mode as your amplifier and detection circuit. So fun, it's gonna be a fun build. So I think I got one more thing to show, is the tube and I'll leave it taped up until I install it, but this will go here. And they even have a little spot for an LED, so even though this, the tube doesn't light up itself, it'll have an LED lighting it up from underneath so you know it's there and working. <laughs> Pretty neat. So there we go. There's our parts, and we're going to fade to black and come back with a finished product. Hello, I'm back. Here's some pictures of the build process. In this first picture, you'll notice I put a few resistors and some diodes in. Pay close attention to resistor number two and leave that one out until you have the headphone jack put in. This became trouble for me later in the build. Resistor number four is replaceable for different values for different LEDs if you choose to change the color. This second picture here, you'll notice I added the capacitors 
a Darlington transistor, and a germanium diode. This third picture, I populated the board with the inductors and variable capacitors. Pay close attention to the band markings on the inductors to make sure you put them in the right position. In this fourth picture, I added the jacks for the crystal and low Z headphones, band select jumpers, external tuning connector, switch and power terminal blocks, and aerial earth connections. In this final pick, I added a tube valve socket and the antenna gain potentiometer. In front of you, you'll see the completed product. It also came with the two AA cell holder. I forgot to show that to you. And here is the finished unit. Go to zoom in on here. There we go. You can see all the work there. There's that resistor two that got in my way. What a pain that was. <laughs> I had to desolder that and, and angle it back some to get it to fit. Yeah, that was a poor spacing issue there. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, okay, so this this is only here for if you use an outside aerial. It does not need to be installed uh, if you're doing using it for just indoor use only. Here we have the on off switch when you're using the low Z headphones. And if you're not, you just leave it uh, off and use the crystal headphones there. They recommend band two or three when using the crystal headset. Here's the external tune. That's nice they put that there because I think this radio needs a better variable capacitor to tune these at least first four bands. Um, I was getting a lot of crowding over a couple of these and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Here's your antenna gain and this works really well all the way to the right. Um, you get good volume from the headset. Here's your aerial and earth connections and I used a 40 foot aerial and a ground to my water pipe to get some signals. On the back of the board you can see I tried to clean it up as best I could very clean. It was very easy to solder. The solder flowed very smoothly. If you notice my LED is left off, I'm thinking about changing the color. I talked about this R4 resistor. I'm going to change that one out for a different value. And I think I'm going to do like a, a blue or maybe a violet, something cool underneath there instead of an amber one. So yeah, it's just personal preference. So yeah, I did a little testing on the board and it works. Yay! Um, is this radio worth $23.25? You know, for the experience of building a radio, and you can say you built a shortwave radio out of a little kit, I would say, yeah, it's worth it, just because it's just fun to learn. Learning process is great. Um, so I didn't get any signals on this first inductor, which was supposed to be um, 700 kilohertz to 1.6 megahertz. It's just showing you that these tuning capacitors aren't that great. That's where this comes into play. And I think I'm gonna try to search out a nice variable uh, capacitor for that external tuner. Uh, the second one, I started getting my really the stations in loud and clear using the low Z headphones. I was able to pick up two local stations very easily, 720 and 780 in Chicago. Same with this third one, which is supposed to be at 1.5 to 3.5 megahertz. I was still getting AM stations. The local ones were swapping over to this and to this next one also. I started to start picking up shortwave right about this one here, which is your 5.4 to 16 megahertz and this last one 11 to 30 megahertz. Now on this last one is when I started to really pick up the shortwave signals. Now I got about two or three I was able to tune in and you know there were some were going over each other but I got uh, a copy on six, uh, six megahertz and I believe um, seven megahertz. So right around there is what I was getting on that. So these, this setup for these inductors isn't the best but it works in a pinch. So I was really happy with the performance and I was able to get my first shortwave signals from a little tiny kit uh, that I put together. So I was very happy, it was a lot of fun. So with that said, uh, would I recommend the kit? As a learning experience, yes. If you're looking for a killer shortwave radio, um, just go buy a portable. You can buy a Texan you know, R9012 for less money and get more stations and a handheld. But if you're looking for a kit and something fun to build, this is great. And this thing probably would perform awesome with an outdoor aerial and with an external tuner, definitely this might be something that I revisit in the future with those things in place. So, well, I appreciate you watching this kit review and hopefully uh, you'll start building something like this or something similar and you'll comment below and tell me what you think. Uh, make sure you like the video because these kits are pretty cool and subscribe if you're new. If you like kits and kit building, I'm gonna try to do this every month or so and build a kit. 
uh, just put something up different, something you don't see every day. Uh, that's what I like about this channel is just, just something different, just something to shake things up. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.